stops and talk about this metaphor with Monopoly, and it reminded me of something I experienced with my grandmother in the game Monopoly. You know the game Monopoly? When I was growing up, my grandmother lived with us for many years, and she was a wonderful woman, my grandmother. She uh, was a widow by the time that she was living with us, and she had helped to raise six children. She was a uh, great storyteller. I loved to hear my grandmother tell stories, and she was a great cook. She would make banana bread and this dessert called red velvet cake, which is mostly butter, I think. And um, she would pop popcorn for us on Friday nights in bacon grease and then put bits of bacon in the popcorn and we'd eat it. Um, nobody in my grandmother's family lived to be real old, <laughs> but uh, we had a great time with her. She's a wonderful person. But she was the most ruthless Monopoly player I have ever known in my life. Imagine what would have happened like if Donald Trump had married, say, Leona Helmsley and they'd have had a child, and you get some idea of what my grandmother was like when she would play Monopoly. We'd start the game, and I would get my little pile of $1,500, and I'd be so excited to have the money, I just wanted to hold on to it. But my grandmother knew how to play the game. She understood that acquisition is the key to survival, that money and property is how you keep score. So she would buy everything she landed on, mortgage all of that to the hilt and buy everything else until eventually, inevitably, my grandmother would become master of the board. Eventually, I would land on her property once too often and have to give her my last dollar and quit in utter defeat. And she would take my last dollar and then say to me, don't worry, Johnny, one day you'll learn how to play the game. I hated it when she would say that to me. And then one summer, I played Monopoly almost every day with a kid named Steve who lived kind of kitty corner from our house. And gradually, as I was playing that summer, I figured out how to play the game. I realized that money is how you keep score, that it requires a ruthless commitment to acquire. And by the time the summer was over, when that fall rolled around and I was ready to play my grandmother again, I was ready to do whatever it took to beat her. I played her with sweaty palms. I was ready to cheat if I needed to beat my grandmother. Slowly, inexorably, I drove her off the board. Relentlessly, I exposed the soft underbelly of my grandmother's <laughs> weakness. The game does strange things to you. I can still remember it happened at Marvin Gardens. And I looked at my grandmother. She taught me how to play the game. She was an old lady by now. She was a widow by the time I knew her well. She had raised my mom. She loved my mom. She loved me. And I took everything she had. I destroyed her financially and psychologically. I watched her give her last dollar and quit in utter defeat. It was the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> and then... She had one more thing to teach me. At the end of the game is when the great lesson comes, and here it is. Now, when the game is over, it all goes back in the box. All that money, all that property, all those houses, and all those hotels, boardwalk and park place, now it all goes back in the box. I didn't want it to go back in the box. I wanted to leave the game out, bronze it maybe, as a memorial to my skill. It doesn't work that way. We get all heated up about the game. We get all excited, all hyped up about the stuff that comes into our lives. And we think that what that stuff is, that what's inside this little piece of leather defines us, makes us important, really matters. And then we forget this one thing, that the game's going to end. The game always ends. And when it does, it goes back in the box. People used to be clear on this. There's a prayer that parents used to pray with their children at night. Most all of you will know this prayer. Parents don't pray it with their children very often anymore. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Kind of somber words. There's a second verse to that prayer. I don't know how many of you know this, but I'm not making this up. Second verse to this prayer. Now you imagine a parent kneeling by the side of their child's bed, praying this prayer with their child. Our days begin with trouble here. Our life is but a span. And cruel death is always near. So frail a thing is man. Good night, honey. 
pleasant dreams, sleep well. <laughs> Sooner or later, parents used to want their children to know, the game is going to be over for you and for me. And all the stuff that you've acquired, it's all going back in the box. So you have to ask yourself, in view of this one great truth, that real smart people forget, how do you play the game? 